what's very important to understand is what's the incentive for the government to join or be part of this new blockchain technology. The only way out for the U.S. to get out of this or to get a grip of this debt cycle that is spiraling out of hand was to somehow convince the masses of a new, more attractive monetary system. And they threw a bone at us, and that bone is called Bitcoin. They did that 15 years ago. If the government would have come right out and told us, hey, we came up with this new monetary system, digital money, it's called Bitcoin, nobody would jump on it. Anything that the government does, nobody wants it because we have been banned multiple times. Lately, 2008, we've been left out in the sun to dry. This housing bubble busted by these institutions giving us subprime loans, meaning that uh, they're giving us mortgages that retailers will never be able to pay. And this is how we lost trust in the government, in institutions and everything. So coincidentally, somebody, a great Samaritan known as Satoshi Nakamoto, he just wanted all of us to benefit from the new monetary system. And then he just disappeared into the sunset. That's what the government wants us to believe. But we all know that the government is behind Bitcoin and they couldn't come out right. They had to sweeten the deal and make it so attractive that everybody jumps on it. They gave themselves 15 years and in those 15 years, nothing much really happened with Bitcoin. And to verify that it's really from the government, it took them two to four months to literally hijack Bitcoin. It's in their control. Wall Street owns Bitcoin, literally. They own the entire logistics. They own the money supply, the liquidity. They have the deepest liquidity through ETFs, over 21 billion. So whoever controls the liquidity controls the asset. That's just a fact. And that's the case. So why am I saying all of this? I'm saying all of this just to say that we need to open our eyes. We need to understand that community tokens are the future. DeFi is the future. This blockchain technology is the future. And everybody that is from Larry Fink that was against Bitcoin to Jamie Dimon that actually wants to turn off the lights on crypto is now so pro-crypto. Politicians are pro-crypto. This is not by coincidence because everybody is screaming buy Bitcoin before BlackRock buys it all from the shelves. Buy Bitcoin before Goldman Sachs and Citibank and UBS buys it. So it's all this formal created around Bitcoin. And it's all in the hopes that us retailers will fall for it and take all the liquidity that is being introduced into the market and put it into Bitcoin so that they can cash out every cycle and leave the retailers broke, indebted, and with no asset with liquidity whatsoever. That's the end game. And this is why it's important for us to understand the value of being part of an ecosystem that is literally retaining liquidity and that is having an asset with deep liquidity, an asset with a sustainable staking distributions that is scalable and that is addressing these four challenges, right? And that is enabling, empowering, equipping, and educating you and me, the masses. And now, all this noise, like we discussed the other day in regards to the US dollar collapsing, blockchain technology is literally not just going to kick the can down the road, but is literally going to establish the US dollar. There is finally a sweeter deal, and this incentive works. With blockchain technology, Stable coins now are the super app. Why are these stable coins a super app? It's because once regulations are put in place, these stable coins, especially US dollar stable coins, because obviously USDT and USDC are the largest de US denominated stable coins based on market cap, they will be forced to have a banking license and they'll be forced to purchase US debts now in order to back the USDC stable coin. And also, this new liquidity fund with BlackRock, we know they're specializing in tokenized security, which is tokenized U.S. debt. That's all they do. They'll just keep repurchasing U.S. debt as well. And their bill token is paired with none other than USDC. As we know, tokenization of asset classes that are in the over $400 trillion right now, even if it's just 10% of it, that's still $40 trillion. So imagine $40 trillion worth of tokenized assets. And once that happens, it gives literally the government a green light to just go bazaar printing fiat. 
Nowhere in the history of the US dollar and the fiat monetary system has there been a money glitch like this, where you can use the blockchain technology and integrate banks, stablecoin issuers, Biddle, liquidity fund, Circle, to become the first national digital full reserve bank. If those three things are put in place, give Circle a banking license to become the first full reserve digital bank. Establish stablecoin regulation and force stablecoin issuers to back their stablecoins with U.S. debt and allow these assets to be tokenized, starting with U.S. debts. And the bond market alone is over $40 trillion. So even just tokenizing the bond market alone is enough to give the government the green light to just print as much as they want. Because keep in mind, the largest holder of U.S. debt is Japan. They have roughly $1.2 trillion. We saw that foreign U.S. debts is at $8 trillion. So this just shows you that blockchain technology introduces a new money glitch for the U.S. to remain the dominant global reserve currency. All these things are falling in line. All these things are put in place in order to have the most massive money printing ever. So once this really follows through, for the first time in history, U.S. will not have to depend on countries anymore. They can now depend on states, on banks, institutions, asset managers, custodians, even retailers to purchase U.S. treasuries. And this is the plan out. And this is how the government, U.S. government, will be given a green light, literally a blank check to print as much money as they need to get this economy running. This is how the economy will fund all this new tech, not just AI, but biotech, all these new assets that will be put on chain. They need liquidity and you can't just have liquidity out of nowhere. The only way for liquidity to enter the markets and to back these stable coins and back BlackRock's liquidity fund and all these tokenized assets, the government has to print money. And the only way government will print money if they have buyers of debts. And now they have a bunch of them. Wyoming is the first state that is issuing stable coins, meaning that the state will be purchasing U.S. debts. We saw how BlackRock, the largest asset manager in the world with 10 trillion in assets. So even if they were tokenized their own assets, that alone is more than foreign U.S. debts because we saw that foreign U.S. debts is 8 trillion. So BlackRock alone has 10 trillion. So they alone will have more than U.S. debt holders combined. This is good news for us. This is good news for the industry. This is good news for those that are launched on Ethereum. And this just shows us that the future is not just bright, but the future is liquid. And the liquidity that we're about to experience is massive. Now that we understand that economy is all about incentives. If the incentive is sweet, everybody will want it and embrace it. In order to be successful, offer a product or a service, that enables, empowers, equips, and educates the masses. It's a proven concept. We've seen it and we're still seeing it with NVIDIA, for example. And we've been through a bear market with literally no volume and still came out of it with the same amount of liquidity like we had at 1 million market cap. This just shows you that we have a proven concept and uh, that our concept works. So in a nutshell, today we underscored that there's new incentives and that this incentive is more attractive. And what makes it more attractive is because it's uh, more sustainable than the current system. This current system depends on debts and interest rates. And this is what makes this new asset class, this new financial monetary system, a more attractive economic choice. And this is why you see everyone led by BlackRock and JP Morgan wants to have a piece of the blockchain technology, wants to be part of this cryptocurrency rush and wants to take advantage of being a stablecoin issuer. This is why they want to issue regulations that banks are allowed to not just be custodians of cryptocurrencies, but literally trade because this now will force banks to purchase U.S. debts even more. States will be purchasing U.S. debts. Asset managers will be purchasing U.S. debts through their liquidity funds like BlackRock has on the Ethereum blockchain. So this is how everything now is being pieced together. And this is how the U.S. is going to manage their debts. This is how the new incentive, economic incentive, is the blockchain technology. And uh, this is how the U.S. dollar is going to remain dominant as far as U.S. global reserve currency is concerned. And this is something great for us. 
that are in the crypto space because this means tons of liquidity is coming our way. This is good for us if we zoom even deeper as ecosystem level because our ecosystem is literally developed to retain all the liquidity. And it does so in a sustainable manner because it addresses the four challenges in the space. And it has a scarce utility, which is a staking platform. And it has a flywheel effect within the ecosystem that benefits both the traders and the stakers, which is good for the platform.